<laughs> G'day and welcome to Clayton Today. I'm Rod Earnshaw and in this program we're thinking about how we do church. And today we're going to get really practical as we look at how to do small group Bible studies. And with me today is Jonathan Pryke, Executive Minister of Jesmyn Parish Church in Newcastle, UK. G'day Jonathan, welcome. Hi Rod, and, good to be um, back with you. <laughs> it's good to have you. Uh, firstly, can you just tell us a little bit about what you do at Jesmyn Parish Church? Uh, well, as you say, I'm the executive minister. I've been on the staff for uh, uh, 20 years, and I have kind of day-to-day -day responsibility for looking after the staff team. It's a fairly large church by English standards, so we have quite a big staff team. And um, well, I'm guessing this falls within your remit. We're talking today about small group Bible studies. Can mm -hmm. you tell us firstly, well, why do you do small group Bible studies? I think they're, absolute, they're absolutely vital for, for the life of the church and for the individual Christian. I think that I, I think of Bible studies as being a bit like a family meal, if you like, and we we have spiritual food together, which is what uh, which is what the Bible is. Mm. And uh, I mean, I've I've been going to small group Bible studies ever since I was a, a teenager, so 35 years or something. I'm I'm, I'm I look oh. older than I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so just like just like physical food for our bodies, I think small group yeah. Bible studies are, are like food for the food okay. for the spirit and the soul. Well, um, think a bit more about what a small group is so important. What do they look like? Is this like a, a midweek Bible lecture or what's a, what sort of Bible study are we talking about? Well, we're talking about a group of, of maybe six to 12 people, something like that. Um, I suppose three main parts of it, Bible, prayer and friendship. That's what really yeah. it's all about. Uh, mm -hmm. So you spend some time looking at the Bible together, some time praying together for one another and uh, just time enjoying one another's company, yeah. having a cup of tea or coffee or something like that. Well, I reckon it might be helpful to, to look at each of those aspects, but um, uh, I think it'd be good to get practical, as we said we were. So thinking quite, getting quite practical about that Bible study end of things, how do you choose what you're going to look at in the Bible? Well, I think if you've never done it before, there are lots of materials out there that can help you. I think a good place to start is just to, is just to work through one of the maybe more straightforward books of the Bible, perhaps something like Mark's Gospel or, or Paul's yeah. Letter to the Philippians, something like sure, that, yeah. and break it down into into not a, not a great long section, so you might be talking in Bible terms of maybe 10 or 15 verses, something like that. And uh, the, the best thing if you're, if you're new to it is to get hold of a, of a book that maybe will have a, a series of Bible studies uh, working, through, working through different passages. And just thinking about uh, if, you, if, you have, if you weren't um, using materials that someone else had already prepared for you, yeah. what sort of things would you want to include in a typical Bible study? I, th I think that, uh, I mean, it's helpful to think of, of, the, of the, the, the Bible study uh, in kind of phases. So you need to think about launching it okay. and then guiding people's discussion yeah. and then kind of summarizing at the end. So, that, so you need questions that will enable you to do those mm -hmm. three things. Yes. And then when you're, when you're working through the passage, um, again, there are, there are sort of three different kinds of questions that it's helpful to look at because you do want people to be learning from the Bible. That you're not just wanting to share one another's ideas uh, that are sort of off the top of your own head. The power is in is in the is in the Bible. It so is these, the word of so God. these questions are directing people to actually understand the yeah. passageways of them. To yeah. So the first kind of question you want to ask is what you might call discovery questions. Just what okay. what is going on here? Yes. Um, and uh, then. Uh, when, when people are just clear about you know, who's saying what to who and, and, and uh, you know, why, they're, why they're writing, what kind, of, what kind of a document it is that you're looking at and what the words mean and sort of simple things like that, then you want to go on to, to understanding what, it, what it's actually all about, you know, what, what, is the, what is the meaning of it, the kind of interpretation. So that's another, the second sort of type of question. Yeah, and then you want to start thinking about applying it. So what should we do about this? Because this is all about not just understanding in our heads, it's about changing lives. Mm. Uh, the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing mm. of your minds. Our minds are renewed by the Word of God as we, as we, as we grapple with it mm. and understand it. So we need to think about that application. You know, yes. what, what do we do about this? What should, how should we think differently? What should we be so doing? I guess that's an introduction at least to the, the nuts and bolts of the study part of it. Uh, the preparation, the questions. Yeah. I guess the whole other side of that is actually what happens when you got the group together. You're in the room. You're studying the Bible. What are the uh, the various sorts of things that you're trying to do with that group? There are three basic things that are going on in a small group. Yeah. You're wanting to you're wanting to care for the the individuals, uh, and it's probably worth saying at this point that in a sense that's in, in terms of being a good leader, mm -hmm. that is right at the heart of it. You need you need to you need to love the members of your group. Yeah and have a concern for them. And in fact, if you do that, you can get away with all kinds of other things because they, they know that you care for them. 
And if there's that kind of atmosphere of love, then you will learn together. You'll get a, you'll get mm. a decent meal together. But so you're wanting to look out for the, the individual needs of people. You're wanting to 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 do the the work, which is which is grappling with the mm. the, the passage of the Bible uh, together. And also you need to you need to to look after uh, the whole group as well, mm. so that you get to know one another and grow. Mm. Uh, together, so there, there are a range of different things that you need to be uh, mm. working on. And so you're, you're it to sound all, a bit complicated. Yeah, I was going to say you've been trying to do all those things at once as you're answering through the, the question. It happens. It happens automatically. But that's what you are. You are trying to. So you're trying to bring out. There'll be all kinds of different people in a group. You know. Mm. So if, to take an example, if there's somebody who's who's sitting there not saying something, mm. then you don't just ignore them, even if the group, even if the group's having a good discussion and so on. So you do want to be aware that somebody is 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 not contributing mm. and mm. think about. You know why that is, mm. and how you can maybe uh, help them. As long as you, people just get the get the food, yeah. get to study the Bible, and I'd pray for one another, then you'll have a good time. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, I guess we, we've, you've touched on one or two of the possible things that you might need to deal with that might make things difficult from the group side of things. I wonder if there are some other sort of, sort of fairly obvious things that you you might be aware of that you think new leaders might need to be need some help on. What are the sort of things they'll need to know how to deal with? Well, there are there are other different kinds of people, of course. Mm -hmm. So there might be somebody. There, there's the there's the silent person. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also the, the the absent person who's not even there at all, and they mustn't yeah. be forgotten. So you need to keep on kind of inviting people and yeah. so on. Uh, don't don't give up on people. There's the there's the, the preacher type who will who will use use the opportunity just to talk too much to ride the hobby horse through the, through yes, the group. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. and it's not it's an occasion for everybody to learn together from mm -hmm. to let the Bible speak to them, not just to listen yeah. to what somebody yeah. else is, is wanting so, to say. So as a leader encountering these different sorts of things going on in the group, how do you help those different characters to stay with the study and to to be aware of others and those sorts of things? Well, you, you, constantly, you constantly have to be bringing people back to the Bible passage and saying, look, we're learning together from the Bible passage here. I mean, so if, somebody, if there is somebody who's talking too much, uh, there, there are different things you can do. I mean, you can maybe sit beside them or you might even want to, you know, if they're doing that consistently, have a quiet word mm -hmm. with them uh, outside of the actual discussion or something like that. Sometimes people are very preoccupied with their own, their own problems mm -hmm. and there's a danger that their problem will dominate mm. what's going mm. on in the group, where actually what you want to be doing is listening mm. to what God is saying yes. to you. So you want to encourage, be constantly encouraging people by the questions that you ask. Yes. The questions yeah. are the crucial thing, yeah. really. That's your role as the leader, is and basically that, to ask That questions. has led me on to another thing that I wanted to ask you, which is, uh, as the leader, are there things that you can do that will be unhelpful to the group, maybe in the questions that you ask or the ways that you ask them? What are the dangers to the leader for taking people away from the study? Well, one of the great dangers is, again, is talking too much and mm -hmm. answering your own questions. So there's a simple rule uh, that, you can, that you can use to avoid that, which is to, to, to tell yourself, all I will do is, is ask questions. I won't answer the questions myself mm -hmm. at all. Um, I mean, the, the kind of questions that you ask are very important as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want, to, you want to avoid the kinds of questions which, which just have very obvious answers like you know what's the third verse the third word in verse three or something <laughs> like that uh, which the, the kind of things that just uh, people actually tend to go silent mm. because it's so mm. obvious they don't want to answer it yeah. uh, or, or a question any question that just has a yes or no answer you want to ask open questions so the kind of question mm. that those kind of why um, mm. and, and um, how type Great. type questions thanks John the, the one the last thing I wanted to ask you about that was um, how do you actually bring the Bible study home into people's lives what do you uh, what are you doing to get to that sort of application side of things? Well, a, a lot of that is in the questions that you ask and the way that you plan your questions. And you do need to plan your questions. Mm. That's part of the preparation. In fact, the key part of the preparation is to have the main questions that you, that you want to get through yeah. uh, sorted, set down on a piece of paper. Not too much detail, just one, maybe one little mm. sheet. But the key thing is you need to go into that Bible study knowing what you want to happen in people's lives mm. afterwards. And the best way to do that is to make sure that you write down in one short sentence on the top of your little piece of yeah. paper your aim for the study, Great. which is an which is an application aim. How John, do you want I'm, people I'm to gonna change? Have to, gonna have to cut you off. <laughs> We're almost out of time. Can you just okay. give us some suggestions of ways that people can take things forward? Just very quickly, two things that resources would be helpful. Uh, well, we were talking about Bible study materials mm -hmm. earlier on. There's, a, there's a, for instance, there are many, there are many different things. But there's a good series that Matthias Media produce of interactive Bible studies on all kinds of different Bible books. There's a book called Growth Groups by Colin Marshall that they, they also publish. Thanks.
Thanks, Jonathan. That's been very helpful. And thank you for watching today. And do come back next time for more practical discussion about how we do church or check out our other programs in this series at www.clayton.tv. Goodbye.